Let's talk to Ronnie Chopra. He is the Chief Market Strategist for Knightsbridge Trading Academy. Very good morning to you, Good morning. Ronnie. Right, three thought-provoking slides to go through. Let's kick off with the first one. Barclays Bank PLC, due to report this week. You've been a bull of this stock for some while now. Um, you're a contrarian investor. Um, what are your latest thoughts? Oh, yes, as you say, they have um, results out on Thursday. Um, the shares have not really done that well recently. Yeah. I mean, with, along with all the other financials. But um, what attracts me to this is that there's that activist investor who has 5%, and he's not going to um, hang around as such, and he's going to make things happen. So with the shares reporting on Thursday, I expect there to be some positive news. I think under £2, they offer great value especially when compared with US financials that are rated far more highly. Um, looking further ahead, these are on a price earnings ratio of eight or nine, which is extremely attractive for a company like Barclays, well-known brand, uh, global company. Um, it's also a major beneficiary of the weak pound, especially against the US dollar yep. and as we hover around the 130 mark. All the profits from the US, when converted into sterling, means that there's a lot more pounds. So you know, there are some attractive qualities. Um, also, if Barclays don't get their act together, Brands, uh, uh, sorry, Bramson, Ed Bramson, with his 5% stake, is going to make things happen. Uh, we heard rumours that they were possibly in merger discussions with Standard Chartered. Chartered, then it could be other banks. Uh, we've recently seen a fairly sharp rise in Deutsche Bank, which, I've, again, I've mentioned in the past. Yep. And I, I wrote an article about them as well about two, three weeks ago when they were around the 10. Actually, they went down to, like, just under 9 euros. Um, and they're now trading, I think, above 10.50. So they, they've picked up somewhat. And I don't know if a, a German, UK-centric massive bank, you know, these two laggards of 2017, if they come together... Um, or if one of the large U.S. financials, the likes of Bank America or Citigroup, that were also touted as predators back in uh, the early 2000s, when Barclays was trading at seven, eight pounds a share, there were rumours of a ten pounds bid. You probably remember as well. Yep. Um, obviously, Barclays is a completely different entity today because it's come out of Africa and it's uh, streamlined its business. But uh, you know, they have some very valuable assets. And at this current price, and with the FTSE around the 7,000 mark, and these hovering below two pounds, I think, uh, you know, for those that are brave... Sorry, FTSE is 7,700. Oh, I apologise. Yes, of course, 7,700. Um, the, uh, the shares below two pounds offer a lot of potential. Okay. And, and also, sorry, um, if we do get a rate hike on Thursday, yep, which is like banks. a 50-50 chance, then that is good for the, the banks. And... Uh, that should also act as a catalyst in driving the, the share price higher. Well, I think the market probability of a rate rise is near 90% on Thursday. Sorry, yeah. Wednesday, big pardon. Th Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, it's, uh, I'd say it's 50 50. Um, but yeah, we shall see. We shall see. I'm not betting on that, I hasten to add. OK, let's move on to um, some crypto. Um, wow, that's a horrible looking chart. If it, you didn't know what that was, you'd be a seller, wouldn't you? But then if you go back a couple of years, these were a lot lower than where they are now. It's, yeah. As we know, Bitcoin, which is the major cryptocurrency. Down 58% the first six months, the worst performing That's asset right. class. Well, I, I think that last December, January, the cryptocurrencies were all over the news. No one knew anything about them. And that was like the kiss of death. It was a bit like the uh, Rockefeller situation back in 1929 with the stock market crash. Um, but... The, the thing that attracts me now to some of these cryptos is obviously they've, they're down sharply. I mean, this one from 1400 is now hovering around $450. Is the fact that um, Larry Fink of BlackRock, my alma mater uh, of years gone by, has said that they may start to offer cryptocurrencies to their uh, investors. Now, that's a big game changer, as we know. BlackRock is the biggest asset manager in the world. And if they start to do that, then it's going to make the likes of Ethereum a more attractive investment uh, proposition. And um, as you know, I prefer to look at things when they've come down somewhat. Yep. The art of contrarian thinking. Absolutely. And um, as we can see in the last 
few weeks, these have they're, they're, they're kind of stabilizing. Drug base. Yeah, there's there's a kind of a base there, isn't there, around this 450 mark, mm -hmm. and I think with Larry Fink. Uh, with his interest in cryptocurrencies, I think it kind of highlights cryptos and um, it, 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 it makes them attractive. I think at this price, that there's obviously that attraction of diversifying one's portfolio and uh, investing in something slightly different, um, especially if, if markets come off, then people will be looking at the likes of cryptocurrencies and the whole way that the banking system works. Uh, because there is a, a limited supply of cryptos. And at the moment, the market cap of all the cryptos, including Bitcoin, which everyone kind of has heard about, is still less than the market cap of large uh, US companies. So you have all the cryptos under, I, I forget what the total market cap is, which I should really know. Um, but, you know, they're, they're off like 70, 75%. And then I, I think that at, at this kind of level, you know, don't put your house on it, but uh, perhaps buy Put them on the back book. OK, yeah. well, let's wrap up with the last slide. Um, Foxton's, the estate agents, what's your thoughts there? Yeah, well, they, they had results out yesterday, and uh, the shares, I think, closed up 9% higher. Fine, 9% when they're only trading around 50 pence doesn't mean much. Uh, but having said that, 9% is still 9%. Yeah. Now, Foxton's, a few years ago, that those that are in London know about Foxton's with their green minis and their uh, sales executives with their plummy accents um, and their relatively high fees. But they've, um, they've started to pick up. And in today's FT as well, there's some positive noises. Obviously, we know that the London property market is in the doldrums at the moment. Um, some areas down 10, 15 percent from, from the peak. And uh, thanks to George Osborne with his ludicrous take on stamp duty. He's kind of ensured that sales of property in London have almost come to a standstill. It was more of a populist vote. Now, with the weak pound again, I reiterate the weak pound, especially against the US dollar, you will have wealthy Americans or Russians, Indians, Chinese, or maybe not so much Russians because they want to leave London now. But um, that the weak pound, obviously, if the property market in central London is down 15, 20%, and sterling's trading around the $1.30 mark, it uh, obviously entices buyers. And with the uncertainty surrounding Brexit at the moment, um, that there could be a, a little bit of a, an upsurge in possible uh, foreign buyers coming back into London. But having said that, it's not just the... Um, buyer's market, it's the rental market that is relatively strong. So they, they have that revenue stream. Um, and, and so, you know, they, they're doing well on that, that front. Uh, but also with the, the, the likes of Foxton's, they, they're one of the stronger, well-known brands, brands in London. Yeah. Uh, they're doing better than their competitors, obviously brand awareness, etc. And um, the, the, the fact that they're, they're languishing at 80, 90 percent off their high of three, four years ago when they were trading close to four pounds a share. Um, again, one of those contrarian stocks, and they, they picked up nine percent yesterday. Uh, there were some asset managers that picked up shares, and that's why they, they had a little bit of a rally. And I, I noticed this morning they're up as well. Well, on that note, in the FT at the weekend, it's a reasons to love your estate agent. So, on that note, Ronnie, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you.